Prompt engineering is one of the most important skills you can learn today with the massive AI boom that we're currently in. Have you ever asked ChatGPT a question, hoping it gives you exactly the unique, perfect answer that you're looking for, only to get back something so generic it feels like it was pulled straight from like a high school essay? Well, you're not alone. But what if I told you that with a few tweaks, you could turn those bland responses into tailored insights, as if you had a team of experts ready to do your bidding and actually give you results that you can use that aren't obviously generated by AI. Today, I'm pulling back the curtain on the art of prompt engineering with ChatGPT. I'll teach you a framework you can use no matter your use case to make sure that ChatGPT will craft the perfect response for you every time. I'll also give you a bunch of templates you can use and examples so you'll never feel lost or frustrated with poor ChatGPT responses ever again. Alright, let's get started. First off, what even is prompt engineering? Put it simply, prompt engineering is basically how you ask an AI questions to get the answer that you want. The better you phrase things and the more information that you give it, the better and more accurate your response is gonna be. AI isn't just some magic box that will know what you're thinking without you telling it. You can think of it like a romantic relationship where you're gonna need to communicate clearly what you want and what you need. Talking with AI is kind of similar. Prompt engineering also follows the principle of garbage in, garbage out, meaning that if you give ChatGPT a bunch of crap or not very much information at all, or you don't tell it what you you want, you're not going to get anything actually useful. Since these large language models like ChatGPT are huge reservoirs of information, your skill in prompt engineering becomes crucial in unlocking the true value hidden within these AI giants. So how do we do that? With a framework. The framework that I recommend is called the Role Goal Context ABA framework, and it'll have everything we need to master prompt engineering and get ChatGPT to give us real usable answers. Basically, it's going to be our blueprint for crafting prompts that lead to precise tailored responses. Let's break it down by parts. First up, we have Role. The role is what we use when we tell ChatGPT to behave in a certain way or pretend to be someone. It'll generally be the first statement of your prompt and it's something like act like a professional copywriter or pretend like you're a movie producer or something like that. When you assign a role in ChatGPT, it's like fitting it into a specific pair of glasses through which it views your prompt. This is a powerful tool because it channels the AI's vast knowledge base and language skills into a focused beam of expertise. So whether you're asking it to think like a professional digital marketer or a seasoned chef or a skilled programmer, each role infuses the responses with nuances and insights that are pertinent to that field. So this way you can leverage ChatGPT's intelligence to get industry-specific advice, content ideas, or technical solutions. And an example of this could be something like, imagine you're a small business owner looking for marketing strategies, telling ChatGPT to act as a digital marketing expert and provide marketing strategies for a local bakery will yield advice that's not just generic, but tailored to unique challenges and opportunities of a bakery's digital marketing. Each role you assign re orients ChatGPT's focus and response style, making it a versatile tool for various professional needs. Assigning roles is also a way to stimulate creativity and problem solving. So for instance, if you're stuck in conventional thinking patterns, asking ChatGPT to assume a role outside of your industry can offer a fresh perspective. So a command like, think like an environmental scientist and suggest sustainable practices for my restaurant business, could uncover new approaches or new ways that wouldn't be immediately obvious or maybe that you haven't thought of before. Next up and most importantly, we have goal. The goal Goal is the what of your prompt, the main task that you want ChatGPT to tackle. This is the only required part of the framework and it's crucial to make this part as clear as possible. If you're vague with your goal and don't give ChatGPT exactly what you want, that's going to lead to responses that miss the mark. So when your goal is concrete and explicit, something like write a detailed guide on beginner yoga poses, ChatGPT has a specific target to aim for and knows what it's going for. So this directness in your request filters out unrelated content, ensuring that your response is focused and on topic. Another thing you can also do with the goal is you can incorporate specific keywords that are related to the goal, and that can significantly enhance the relevance and the wording of ChatGPT's responses. When your goal is well articulated, ChatGPT can produce content that not only answers your question, but also aligns with your broader objectives. So whether that's educating an audience, generating leads, providing entertainment, or really anything. A well-defined goal helps transform a simple AI tool into a strategic asset for your content creation process. Next part of the framework, we have context. A good way you can think about context is context acts like a map for ChatGPT, and it's gonna guide it through your request and give ChatGPT more information about what you're looking for. So when you provide additional details like target audience, tone, or style, you're essentially setting parameters that shape how ChatGPT is going to respond. So context is really what makes 
makes the difference between some generic reply that you can tell is AI generated and one that's an actually good focused response and knows what's going on. For instance, specifying that you're addressing first time home buyers in a real estate article versus just home buyers is going to ensure that your content is approachable and tailored to the unique concerns and knowledge level and problems that first time home buyers encounter versus somebody who's maybe done this a couple of times. Context can be as diverse as your imagination. So it encompasses a range of elements from demographics to desired emotional impact on your content to a whole bunch more that I'll get into in just a minute. Adding good context is the difference between asking for a blog post about meditation and a beginner friendly guide on meditation for stress relief with a friendly and reassuring tone that's approximately 1000 words. So you can kind of see how those are different and how you would get a different response from the AI with each one. And don't worry, I'll go over some examples in ChatGPT in just a minute here. But providing context is particularly crucial when the content needs to engage or persuade as well. Adding this contextual information is going to empower ChatGPT to craft responses that not only inform, but are also going to connect on a deeper level. There's a whole bunch of different types of context that you can add to your posts and I'll go over some specific ones in a minute here. But first, I want to talk about the last major part of the framework, and that's ABA, which stands for Ask Before Answer. The concept of ABA, or Ask Before Answer, is a great way to get ChatGPT to get its own context and information that it needs to give you the responses that you want. Basically, the way it works is at the end of your prompt, you say something like, before answering, I want you to ask me five questions about X so that you can better understand me and what I'm asking. ChatGPT will then ask you a few questions about your prompt and your background, to which you'll give a response. Then once ChatGPT has those answers, Answers, it will generate the initial response that you asked for with much more detail and accuracy than what you would have originally gotten. A good analogy to this in the real world is basically like a consultant asking probing questions to fully understand a client's needs before offering advice. So by setting your prompt to trigger questions from ChatGPT, you open the door to a more tailored and accurate outcome. So this method is particularly beneficial for complex or ambiguous tasks where the initial information might not be enough for an optimal response. An example could be if you're working on a marketing strategy, a prompt like before before you suggest marketing tactics, what information do you need from me about my target audience? Is not only going to guide ChatGPT to ask relevant questions, but it also ensures that the final advice is custom to your specific solution once it gets those responses from you that it needs. So the ABA part of this framework really helps with precision in your answers. So it changes ChatGPT from like a passive response generator into an active participant in what you're trying to get from the AI. So this back and forth can unearth key details that might have been overlooked, whether because of you or because of the AI, and it's going to lead to richer more relevant and effective answers. Understanding and applying the aspects of the role, goal, context ABA framework is going to significantly enhance your interactions with ChatGPT. It's going to help you get more precise, relevant, and creative outputs from the AI and make it so you get some actually useful responses that you can use for whatever your needs are. If you want a free cheat sheet of this framework so that you can reference it easily, I've included a link in the description so you can download it there with some examples of how to use it. All right, now let's get into some examples so you can see the framework in action. Okay, so here we are in ChatGPT. So I'm going to go over an example. So if you remember earlier in the video, I mentioned coming up with a content marketing plan for a bakery. So if we just do a normal response, like something super simple, like write me a content marketing plan for a local bakery, we'll probably get a semi-decent response um, that has some good information, but nowhere near as precise or as specific for when we change it to be more of a prompt engineered framework using the role goal context ABA. So you can see that it's generating the response here. You can see that creating a content marketing plan for a local bakery involved strategizing how to use valuable, relevant, and consistent content to attract and retain a clearly defined audience. So you can see that it has some of the things that you would expect from a content plan so you're defining the objectives, our target audience, our content themes and topics, how we want it to be posted, content distribution channels, a calendar, measure success. So this is all very good information. Um, it's just kind of basic and generic. So we would have to then take all this information and apply it to our business. But what if we want to get ChatGPT to apply it for us? So that's where prompt engineering comes into play. So we can get a better response by just wording this prompt a little bit differently. So instead of just saying, write me a content marketing plan for a local bakery, we are going to write this instead. Okay, so I just wrote this out and pasted it in. And so you can see that this is a much more detailed prompt. So 
we start off with role. We're going to say act as if you are a professional content strategist and digital marketer. And then we jump right into goal. So our goal is to develop a content creation plan that boosts the local bakery's social media presence. And then after this, after the goal, we go into context. So speak in a friendly and conversational tone and give the response in paragraph format. So here we're talking about tone and style and then also the type of format that we want. And right after going over this prompt, I will give some more examples of the different types of context that you can use for prompt engineering. So make sure you stay to the end of the video for those. And then we end with the ABA or the ask before answer. So before diving into the plan, ask about any special bakery events coming up, their most popular products, if they have any current social media strategies and any other questions you think would be relevant to help you craft the perfect response. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to give us questions because it, we asked it to give us questions about our bakery and our product so it will have more information. So you can see that it is generating these questions here now. So I'm just going to take a second to answer these. Um, you can see that it says, do we have any special events or promotions coming up? Um, do we have any, what products do we want us to highlight? What are we doing currently? What's our USP or our unique selling points? How do we stand out? How do we currently engage with customers? And do we have photos and videos and stuff that we can include in our marketing campaign? So once we have all of those and give this information to ChatGPT, then it'll give us a much more detailed response. So, so I'll take one second and write the answers to those questions now. Okay, so I just finished answering all of ChatGPT's questions for our bakery here. So I just did like a super simple, like one, two sentences for each, but you could get as in-depth as you wanted for each one of these if you have more information. And the more in-depth and the more context that you give ChatGPT, the better that the response is going to be. So I can see for upcoming events, I said we're at a local farmer's market this coming Tuesday, and we're gonna have a new recipe for apple fritters. Um, Star products or cinnamon rolls are our most popular and they sell out every day. For current social media, I said, I have an Instagram account for the bakery that I post on once a week. And then for unique selling proposition, um, we've been in business for over a hundred years and all the recipes have been passed down through my family and grandmother from France. Then customer engagement. We haven't really engaged much on social media besides posting a few pictures on Instagram and visual assets. I do have photos of the product and a camera so I can take more if I need it. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter and see what kind of response we get back from ChatGPT now that we've given it more context and information. And now that we're following the role goal context ABA framework. So you can see it's starting to generate and it's already giving us much more detailed and specific information that we can use. So just starting with like a little opener here saying basically rehashing what we just said in the answers to our questions here. And you can see that it comes up with like very specific things about what we just said. So it says leading up to the farmer's market, we're going to have countdown posts. So a few days before the events, we're going to post countdowns to build anticipation for the farmer's market and unveiling of our new apple fritters um, it'll sh suggest that we do some behind the scenes prep so i predict that this content would actually do pretty good because a lot behind the scenes stuff is really popular right now on social media this is a really good suggestion from the ai um, it also says we can do celebrating our heritage so we can have some throwback posts that are going to celebrate the history and the legacy of our bakery and some of the family recipes and then we can also spotlight some of the recipes without giving away our secrets so this is another great suggestion and then you can see it just goes into even more depth on things that we can do to engage our audience and what specifically we can be doing so it gives us specific ideas for types of posts so we can run polls we can invite people to make content for us with UGC it tells us to post at least three to four times a week and the types of posts that we want and the types of content and then it also highlights that the goal is to tell a story with the bakery to engage the audience and showcase our baked goods in a way that encourages followers to visit us in person or online so you can see just how much better that response is to the first one that we had with was just write me a content marketing marketing plan for a local bakery like this is okay but there's no specificity to it and there's nothing that's like really special about it but with this one once we prompted it with more specifics and context and gave it the answers to those questions it wanted it gave us a very specific plan with things that we can actually use and implement for our bakery All right, so that's just one example to show you the power that you can get with actual good prompt engineering and how to get some real responses from ChatGPT. now there's a couple different kinds of context that you can give ChatGPT that I want to dive into now, just so you're armed with more information and more tools that you can use to get the best answers out of ChatGPT. The first one I'm going to talk about is tone, style, and length, or TSL. And this type of context can be good when you already have something in mind as far as the characteristic or length of writing that you want your response to be. So the difference between these is tone is the emotional character of your content. It's the voice in the reader's head and the mood that you set. So when using ChatGPT, defining the tone is crucial for aligning the response with your brand's personality or the intended impact on the audience. For example, instructing 
ChatGPT to write a product description in a humorous tone not only makes the content enjoyable, but also makes your brand more relatable and memorable. So the tone can range from professional and authoritative to casual and friendly, depending on your target audience and the nature of your content. So when you think tone, think emotions. So sad, joyful, anxious, etc. Similar to tone, we have style. So style encompasses the complexity, formality, and approach of the content. It's about how the message is conveyed. A prompt like write in a conversational style as of talking to a friend instructs ChatGPT to use simple, relatable language, making the content more accessible. So something like a formal style would suit professional or academic content, while a casual style is ideal for lifestyle blogs or social media posts. And casual versus professional is usually my most common qualifier that I use for style. And the last part of TSL is length. And so that's pretty self-explanatory. You can tell ChatGPT how long you want your response to be. So whether you need a concise summary or an in-depth analysis, setting a clear length expectation helps ChatGPT to align its responses with whatever your content strategy is. So you can give it instructions like keep the response to one paragraph or draft a script that would take about 10 minutes to speak out loud. It's going to ensure that the content produced fits perfectly in your planned space. So whether it's a quick social media post or a detailed video script or anything in between really. Another type of context that you can give ChatGPT is a format specification. Asking ChatGPT to provide answers in a specific format can significantly enhance the utility of its responses. So this is basically how you want to receive your response. So it can be data in a table, a list in CSV format, or even like code or Python snippets. Specifying the desired format ensures that the output is immediately usable. So for instance, if you're working on travel planning, you might request provide a travel itinerary in table format with columns for date, activity, and location. Let's take a look at an example. So this example is going to be in the travel niche. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to give me a travel itinerary and give it to me in table format. So I'm going to say, we act like a professional travel agent plan me a three day trip to Rome. I want to eat at the best restaurants and stay in hotels that are nice, but not too expensive. Give me the results in table format plan each day for me. All right. So the context part here is the give me the results in table format. And so this is the part that is going to, and so by telling it to give it in table format, you can see that it breaks it down into this table format, just like we asked it to. It's breaking it down by days too. So you can see it's doing morning, afternoon, evening, giving us an activity to do, telling us details. So like hotels, so where are we gonna stay? Where are we gonna eat? And it does it for each day of our trip. Now you can get even more detailed for this as well if you want to. So you can say like, give me more times or add this column. So add a column specifically for room and stuff like that. So that's one example of the output. So you can tell it that you want to get something in table format or CSV or as a code snippet or some things like that. Another good way to provide context to ChatGPT if you have something in mind already that you're thinking of and is not just quite giving you the response that you want is you can give it an example. When you show ChatGPT a sample of the the kind of content that you're looking for, it can mimic that style or structure in its response. So for instance, if you're aiming for a particular writing style or tone, enclosing an example of that style in triple quotes sets a clear benchmark for ChatGPT to follow. So this can be really helpful if you want to use ChatGPT to replicate your unique writing style or basically make a clone of yourself in ChatGPT. So it's like you writing, but really it's ChatGPT doing the writing. The next type of context we can add is called task splitting. For complex or more extensive tasks, breaking them down into smaller, more manageable parts can lead to better results most of the time. So splitting tasks allows you to focus on one aspect of the task at a time, ensuring that each part receives the attention it deserves. So for example, one way that I use this a lot is when writing YouTube scripts. So you can start by asking ChatGPT for content ideas or a basic outline. And then once you refine the outline to your liking, you can then instruct ChatGPT to develop each section into individually. So the general process is have an idea for a YouTube video, come up with a title, then ask ChatGPT to give me a possible outline for the video. Then I will tweak the outline and add in my flavor and everything that I actually want to include. And then I will take that outline and put it back into ChatGPT and, and ask it to start writing sections of the script for me. So I'll ask it for a couple example hooks that I can do. I can ask it to come up with some more examples or stories for me and things like that. And so this is a great way to break it up into tasks. So you don't just get one long block from ChatGPT and the results are going to be a lot higher quality and much more usable. In my ChatGPT, I've also kind of made a clone of myself where I've basically 
basically fed it with a whole bunch of my writing samples and stuff with my background information so it knows how I write and knows things about me and using that I'm able to get more personalized YouTube video scripts and stuff like that if you want to learn how you can make a clone of yourself in ChatGPT to do the same thing just leave a comment below and I'll make a video on that but you can use task splitting for more than just YouTube video scripts as well so in website building for instance you might start by giving ChatGPT the overall concept for your website and then tackle each web page separately and ask ChatGPT to generate copy for each section based on specific guidelines. So this step-by-step -step approach not only makes the process more manageable, but it also allows for a more tailored and cohesive end result. All right, now you're a master of ChatGPT prompt engineering. So if you learned something from this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you want more tutorials and deep dives on how to actually use AI in a real way in your life and business. Also a reminder, if you want the cheat sheet for the role, goal, context, ABA framework with a bunch of examples so you can easily remember and reference everything I talked about in this video, I'll have a link for that in the description. That's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.